Ahlan was Ahlan, and welcome to Edupedia World Videos, Intermediate Arabic, with your instructor, Laura El Albani. In this lesson, we'll be learning about negation in Arabic using the verb laysa. This is part two, learning objectives. By the conclusion of this lesson, students will be able to, one, understand how laysa, as a sister of kana, changes the grammar of a sentence. Two, formulate sentences using laysa at the beginning of a sentence. And three, formulate sentences using laysa after the subject of the sentence. In part one, we learned that the verb laysa is a past tense verb that's used to negate a jumla ismiya. A jumla ismiya is a sentence that begins with a name or a noun. We also learned that laysa is a hollow verb. And we learned how to conjugate laysa. In this lesson, we're going to learn about laysa and its relationship to kana. Laysa is a sister of kana. In Arabic, we say laysa min akhawat kana. There are a total of 13 sisters of Kana, including Kana, Laysa, Sara, Bata, Mazala, Mabariha, Mafete'a, Ma'infaq, Madama, Espaha, Edha'a, Dalla, and Amsa. In this lesson, we'll only be looking at Laysa and how it's affected by its relationship to Kana. The other sisters of Kana will be addressed at a different time. So what happens if you put Laysa or any of the sisters of Kana in a sentence? If you put any of these words in a sentence, the predicate, Al-Khabar, will change from the nominative case, al marfua to the accusative case, al mansub Let's look at an example. Let's take a simple sentence. El Beitu Jadidun. El Beitu means the house. Jadidun means new. So the house is new. El Beitu is Mubtada, or the subject of the sentence. And Jadidun is Khabar, or information about the subject, also known as the predicate. When we add Laysa to the sentence, it becomes Laysa el Beitu Jadidan. Note that the predicate, el Khabar, of an equational sentence changes to the accusative case because of the verb Laysa. El Beitu becomes Isam Laysa, and Jadidan becomes Khabar Laysa. Laysa el Beitu Jadidan means the house is not new. You'll notice that the spelling of the word jadid also changes. We add an aleph to the end of the word and then tenween feta because jadid is masculine in gender and is now in the accusative case. In part one, after learning the conjugation of laysa, we learned that most of the time you'll only use laysa or laysa. Now you're going to find out why. If laysa is placed before a noun or an adjective, it only needs to agree in gender. Let's look at an example. Laysat el binatu jami Latin. The girls are not beautiful. Here, the subject, el mubtada, el binatu, is feminine and plural. But when we choose our form of laysa, we don't have to use the feminine plural form. We use laysat, the feminine singular form. This is because we're adding it before the subject of the sentence. Arabic dialects will often use this pattern because it simplifies everything. You'll only have to remember two forms, laysa and laysat, instead of all the other forms of the verb. Let's look at some more examples. In the first example, we have Hamidun, Talibun. 
Hamid is a student. When we add Laysa at the beginning of the sentence, it becomes Laysa Hamidun Taliban. Hamid is not a student. Now notice the change in voweling. In the first sentence, Hamid ends with Tenween Dhamma and Talib ends with Tenween Dhamma. Hamidun Talibun. But when we add Laysa to the mix, Hamid becomes Isam Laysa. It still retains Tenween Dhamma as its ending. Laysa Hamidun. But then look at what happens to Taliban. Taliban goes into the accusative case because it becomes Khabar Laysa. Taliban takes Tenween Feta instead of Tenween Dhamma. And because it's a masculine singular noun, we add an extra aleph to the end of it. Laysa Hamidun Taliban. Now let's examine example number two. At Tulabu Sigarun. The students are small. At Tulab is a masculine plural noun. But you'll notice that in the second example in that set, Laysa at Tulabu Sigarun, we add Laysa, which is the masculine singular form of Laysa. We do this because Laysa is placed first in the sentence. You'll also notice the voweling change. Etulab becomes Isam Laysa, and Sigaran changes to the accusative case because it becomes Khabar Laysa. Because it's a masculine adjective, we add that extra aleph at the end of it. Now let's look at example number three Aminatu Tabibaton. Amina is a doctor. Aminatu is a female name. For that reason, it only takes one vowel marker, in this case, a dhamma. Tabibaton takes ten ween dhamma. When we add a form of lesa to the sentence, we have to use laset because Amina is a female. Here we're putting laset at the beginning of the sentence. So Amina becomes Isam Laysa and Tabiba becomes Khabar Laysa. Look what happens to Amina. It retains one vowel marker. Laysat Amina to Tabiba Tan. The voweling on Tabiba changes from Tenween Dhamma to Tenween Feta. Because it's a feminine noun, we no longer have to add that extra Aleph. It doesn't change the pronunciation. And it's not required because it's a female noun. And finally, let's look at the last example. El binatu mujtahidatun. El binat is a feminine plural noun. But when we want to negate the sentence, we add laset, which is the feminine singular form of the verb because we're putting it at the beginning of the sentence. So it becomes laset el binatu mujtahidatin. El binatu retains the dhamma because it becomes isam laysa and mujtahidat becomes khabar laysa. But notice the voweling change. We have Tenween Kesra instead of Tenween Feta, as we would expect. So you're probably wondering why did we use Tenween Kesra instead of Tenween Feta at the end of the feminine plural noun? Feminine plurals take the same grammatical ending for both the genitive and the accusative cases. Therefore, after Laset, the feminine sound plural in the predicate will take Kesra instead of feta. Now let's examine what happens if we put laysa after the subject of the sentence. If we put laysa after a noun or an adjective that's the subject of the sentence, it has to agree in both number and gender. Let's look at our same example, but this time, instead of putting laysa first, 
we're going to put the subject first. Albanatu lesna jamilatin. So instead of using lace it as we did previously and just using the conjugation for the feminine gender, now we have to use lesna. It's conjugated for both feminine gender and for plural number. So putting the subject first complicates the situation and requires that you know all of the forms of the conjugation that you learned previously. Now let's examine what happens when we add lesa after the subject of the sentence instead of at the beginning of the sentence. Let's look at our first example. Hamidun Talibun. Hamid is a student. Here we're going to add lesa after the subject Hamidun and it becomes Hamidun Lesa Taliban. We're still using Lesa because Hamid is a masculine singular noun. And we're still changing Taliban because Talib is Khabar Lesa and Lesa is Ocht Kana. In example two, we have a plural masculine subject, a tulab. A tulabu sigarun. Here, instead of adding lesa as we did previously when we put it at the beginning of the sentence, we have to change it to lesu. We use lesu because a tulab is a plural masculine subject. Sigarun remains the same. As khabar lesa, it takes that extra aleph because it's masculine. In addition to tenwin feta. Now let's look at the third example. Amina to tabibaton. Amina is a doctor. Amina is a female name. So we have to use laset and not lesa. When we want to negate the sentence, it becomes amina to laset tabibaton. Tabiba takes tenwin feta because it's khabar lesa. It's not necessary to add the extra aleph because tabiba ends in tamarbuta and it's a feminine singular noun. Now let's examine our final example. El binatu mujtahidaton. The girls are diligent. If we want to negate this sentence, we can't use laset at the beginning as we did previously because el binatu is a feminine plural noun. So we need to completely conjugate our form of lesa, and we use lesna. So the sentence becomes el binatu lesna mujtahidatin. Remember that we have a vowel change on mujtahidat. Instead of saying mujtahidatan, we say mujtahidatin because mujtahidat is a feminine plural noun. And that brings us to the end of our lesson. If you liked our video, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. Ma salama.